Oh, it worked, look. So tonight, we're gonna be doing some, uh, some Christmas sides, you know, hence the shirt and the wine and you know, getting ready to go. So uh, I'm gonna give you three recipes, easy ones, super easy. You can bang all three of them out in an evening, no problem. I mean, you can use them for Christmas and so they're great for that or any time of the year, no problem. So kind of tailoring in with uh, one of my other videos that we did with the seasonal vegetables and using local stuff. Uh, we're gonna do, the first recipe is gonna be with uh, some butternut squash. So you can sub, um, you know, any other type of squash that you like, kabucha squash, uh, acorn squash, any anyone that your favorite or that you get from uh, your local farmer's market, whatever they have at that time. I like to peel them. I mean, there's a few of them that you don't really need to peel. Like acorn squash, if you roast it really nicely, uh, you can eat the skin. Same with butternut squash, but uh, for this application, we're gonna peel it, okay? Some for the chef. I mean, more for the chef, but. I'm gonna cut it into about inch squares. Nice and rustic, again, this is just a super, super simple, fast, easy side dish that you can do with anything, whether you guys do turkey, whether you do ham, whether you roast, whatever you do for your Christmas dinners, this is gonna please everybody that comes. And also, like, great dishes for vegetarians. Too. So, we got our diced squash, a little bit of balsamic vinegar, a little bit of olive oil, some salt, Two cloves of garlic. I'm just gonna give these a little crush. That's it, just like that. Throw it in the bowl, give it a toss. A little bit of rosemary. Again, like I said, super rustic, super fast, super easy. Things that will please everybody. I'll go with anything. Okay, we're gonna just put them onto a baking tray. And I've got my oven preheated to uh, 350 on convection. And uh, you can just do it with roast, whatever, if you don't have a convection oven, or do the same thing. So to go with the butternut squash as well, what I've got is some actually local BC hazelnuts, okay? So, shit. BC hazelnuts, in my opinion, are absolutely delicious, and like, you can get them all over. I've got these ones, uh, they've still got the husk on, I'm gonna roast them with, with the shell. Same temperature oven, same everything, you can do them at the same time that your squash is roasting. Easy peasy. Uh, so we'll just get those ones in the oven too. So we have our roasted hazelnuts. You can buy hazelnut crackers and they're very good. Uh, I have misplaced mine. So I'll show you another way because most of you probably don't have one. Okay, just a few. I'm gonna put them on here and I'm just gonna show you how to crack them in a bulk amount with, with a pot. <laughs> okay, cover them up. I'm gonna make some noise, all right? Oh shit. I'm looking at Dylan, folks, and his cringing face. <laughs> Didn't work. <laughs> so the counter has too much flex in it, fuck. See, look, all five of them cracked there. Look, look, come here, come here, no, come here, okay? See, this is what I'm talking about. Right counter for the job. There we go. All right, so we have our beautiful roasted squash. Again, you can check it, just take your knife. Oh yeah, nice and tender all the way through. Just wanna make sure that it's not super hard, obviously, right? Nice, cooked, uh, golden brown. Move the rosemary to the side, garlic to the side, because we didn't take the husk off. I've already seasoned it. It's already got all the flavoring, all of the vinegar, everything, all the beautiful seasoning. And then these hazelnuts that I have here that we painstakingly cracked. <laughs> Just right over the top. Super easy, guys, I mean, really. I mean, I think anybody could do that. It looks delicious. The next one we have for you today is radicchio. Radicchio is super underused in my opinion. Uh, very common in Italian cuisine. Um, it's starting to gain a bit of popularity, but it's, it's quite bitter. To kind of really counteract that bitterness, make it a little bit more palatable for some of your guests potentially. We're gonna add some sugar to it as well as some vinegar, kind of make it sweet and sour. In Italian, it's called agrodolce. We're gonna add a little bit of onion, a little bit of garlic. I've got some red wine vinegar and some sugar, a little bit of salt, really simple. Sliced onion, squash the garlic. I like to slice my garlic nice and thin. You don't bruise it that way. 
All right, so let's get the onions and the garlic going. I'm gonna do this on medium heat. Get it nice and sauteed, translucent, just to add some depth. The next step we're gonna do, guys, is we're going to add some of the sugar and some of the vinegar. We are going to make, in culinary terms, what's called a gastrique. Um, it is going to just make this, like I said, nice and sweet and sour. So I'm adding about, for three heads of radicchio, let's go with like third of a cup of sugar, okay? Third of a cup of sugar, and we're gonna do equal parts vinegar. It's got one of these little stupid caps on it, so. All right, there we go, okay. Third of a cup, exactly third of a cup. At that level of the bottle, guaranteed third of a cup, okay? Now we have our vinegar, sugar, onions, garlic, back on the heat, and we're gonna bring this up to the boil just so the sugar dissolves into the vinegar. I'm gonna chop the radicchio. Again, we're gonna be cooking this down for a little bit, so like I said, right from the beginning is rustic, 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 easy, quick, okay? So it's gonna be cooked down, and you know, nobody needs to dice things perfectly. Cut it into eighths or quarters, chop it up. You know, Robert's your father's brother. Like, there you go. So we're boiling. I am going to add the radicchio into the pot now. All right, last thing that we're gonna add to this, a bit of salt and pepper, okay? You can add as much salt or pepper as you want. I tend to lean a little bit uh, more to the salty side. I've been, you know, eating and drinking for a long time and like things to be seasoned really heavily and, and I think that things taste better with salt. If you guys wanna leave a little bit of it out, like that's that's your prerogative, do it. So with the uh, with the radicchio, what we wanna do is we wanna cook it down, cook out kind of the, the texture that it has. We wanna make it nice and soft, but we also want the vinegar and the sugar to reduce down together and create this like nice rich sauce. We're almost there, you can kind of see we still have a little bit of watery liquid. You want that to reduce down to almost like a syrup. So it almost kind of candies the outside. It's gonna be sweet, it's gonna be sour, it's gonna be a little bit bitter. Again, like this is one of my favorite things ever. Like you guys are gonna love it, trust me, just, just make it, fuck. Okay, so I'm gonna get Dylan to come in here and show you this. See the, the liquid's reduced down to a nice syrup. So we're gonna have all that sweetness from the sugar, we're gonna have the, the harshness is gonna go away from the vinegar and it's nice and kind of candied, coated with all of the beautiful sauce. I don't even need this, think this needs a garnish. This to me is beautiful. Bitter, sweet, sour. This is delicious. Boom, done. Let it snow, let it snow. Final side dish, again, with the simple Christmas idea, we're gonna do Brussels sprouts. Everybody loves Brussels sprouts now. Super hot, super trendy. These are not the Brussels sprouts that uh, your grandmother, not my grandmother, because if my grandmother's watching this, then you know she'd kill me, because she cooked perfect Brussels sprouts always. Right, Dylan? Right. Yeah, okay, cool. Instead of doing something crazy, like blanching them and doing all these different steps, we're just gonna take them raw. We're gonna slice them really, really thin, and this dish is, uh, Another kind of Italian dish, you know, my heritage being Italian, I like those Italian flavors. A really traditional Italian dish called bagna cauda, um, an anchovy butter garlic sauce that you dip cold vegetables in. Um, but we're gonna do it with Brussels sprouts. Once the Brussels sprouts are cooked, we're gonna add the garlic, the butter, the anchovy paste, and the salt. And that's gonna finish everything. And you wanna season this one last, you wanna taste it first because your anchovy paste, or if you're using whole anchovies, quite salty. Put it all together. Taste at the end, season at the end, that's totally fine. All right, so we'll save the garlic for the last little bit. Brussels sprouts, local again, like I said, all local sides, okay? We're just gonna chiffonade, really, really thin. You can use a mandolin if you have one. You don't need to blanch these ones because we're cutting them so thin. They're gonna cook really quickly. Um, and you know, they're, they're just gonna get really nice and maintain that nice crispy texture uh, that you wanna keep. You don't want your Brussels sprouts to be soggy. No one wants soggy Brussels sprouts. That's why your grandmother's Brussels sprouts suck. They do, they do. They do, I'm sorry, they fucking I do. My, gra my grandma's Brussels sprouts don't suck. They don't? No. Nope. Okay, then maybe all your Brussels, maybe your grandmother's Brussels sprouts don't suck. Maybe I'm just pretending. Grandma, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, 
Uh, canola oil, don't use olive oil for this one. This is a super important tip. Don't use olive oil. Olive oil has a very low smoke point in comparison to a canola oil, a grapeseed oil, or a sunflower seed oil. Those are the kind of oils that you wanna use when you're sauteing or uh, caramelizing things at high heats. It will limit the amount of smoke that you have in your kitchen and probably piss your neighbors off less, hopefully. Or if you don't like your neighbors, then fuck it, use olive oil. Just don't, I mean, <laughs> it'll taste burnt, okay? Brussels sprouts are sliced. Like I said, we're gonna add these things later, the garlic, the anchovy, and the butter. We're gonna add those last. Um, so this is the point in the video when you wanna make sure that you have your hood vent turned on default. It's gonna get a little smoky because we wanna get quite a bit of color, high heat. We wanna brown the Brussels sprouts really nice. That's where you're gonna develop that nice rich, nutty flavor. And that's what's gonna make your Brussels sprouts not just taste like cabbage, they're gonna taste delicious. Brussels sprouts, caramelized, ready to start finishing this one off. Next step, this is important too. I want you to make note of this one. We're gonna add the garlic now. Your pan's still really hot. I'm gonna turn the heat down to medium. Remove it just a little bit so it cools down. We're gonna add the garlic, slightly cook the garlic. We don't wanna burn it. Burnt garlic has a really bitter flavor. Uh, so we're gonna add the garlic in now. Okay, next step guys, we're gonna add the anchovy paste, probably like a teaspoon, I guess. You don't want it to be too, too salty, but you just want to add that nice kind of anchovy, salty deliciousness, umami to everything. Okay, so now what we're gonna do, right before we add the butter, we're gonna add a touch of water to the pan. This is gonna just kind of stop everything from cooking, cool the pan down slightly, and give it a little bit of moisture that's gonna allow us to kind of emulsify the butter into the Brussels sprouts and make a little bit of a sauce. Rather than just having melted butter and Brussels sprouts, you're gonna have a kind of homogenized mass that's gonna go coat the Brussels sprouts because who doesn't want butter coated Brussels sprouts? So we've added the water. Now what we're gonna do is I've turned the heat off. Now we're gonna add the butter. This part's really important too, guys. What you wanna do is you're just gonna add the butter into the pan and you're gonna constantly keep it moving, stirring, tossing, whatever you wanna do. You wanna coat everything really well, emulsify that butter into the little bit of water that we added. It's, like I said, it's just gonna coat everything really, really well and give you this beautiful, rich, elegant sauce that's gonna coat your Brussels sprouts. And my dear. Brussels sprouts, banya cauda. We got the caramelized Brussels sprouts, anchovies, butter, garlic, deliciousness. No garnish on this one. You can if you want, you can put whatever you want. Some toasted pine nuts on top will be nice. Maybe a little bit of Parmesan cheese if you wanted to. I'm just gonna go natural. Simple, easy, delicious. That's what we're going for. Three delicious sides, super easy to execute at home. Really, really delicious. Gonna go great with anything that you make for this Christmas. Thanks so much again, guys. Hope you enjoy. Merry Christmas.